Okay, this session is all about questions that you'll find in your PADI instructor exams regarding decompression illness. Now, decompression illness covers both lung overexpansion injury and also decompression sickness. Now, as usual, I think that the best way for you to learn this is to use that approach of by teaching we learn. So what's a really good idea is while you're watching this video, try to imagine that you're teaching this subject onwards to a class. And it's really amazing how quickly you do learn when you start using that approach. I mean, you are gonna become instructors soon anyway. So anyway, let's start with this, with teaching about burst lungs. But how can you teach lung overexpansion injury to other people? Well, I guess that most instructors, they usually start by talking about balloons bursting. And I guess that's fairly descriptive for open water divers because for them, it's a great analogy. And it certainly gets the point across, like they can imagine that if they was to hold their breath, their lung is gonna burst during a dive. But for those of us that are heading towards dive master exams or our IDC exams, we, know, we need to know just a little bit more than a burst balloon. Because now we find out that unlike a balloon simply bursting, we now need to learn that symptoms change depending on whereabouts in the lung that it bursts. And along with that come some horrendous words, words like emphysema, mediastinal, pneumothorax. I mean, there's loads of words, all these medical terms. Now, the good news is that you never have to remember what those words are, but it's a really good idea if that you can recognise them. Um, and I think that I'm going to be able to help a little bit along those lines. So let's get started then. So, well, if you didn't realise, this is a drawing of my lungs. Um, it's not exactly an x-ray, but you know. Now let's imagine that I held my breath while I was on a dive. Now, as I came up towards the surface, air is going to expand. And of course, my lungs would eventually, they burst. But where? Now, let's imagine first off that the lungs are going to burst right here at the bottom, sort of here. Let's say in this area. So air would expand, burst the lungs and get into this area. And as I come up further, that air in turn would then expand in the middle of my stomach. So you can imagine the type of discomfort that I'm going to feel sort of bloated and in pain just around here in the middle of my body. Now, this is called mediastinal emphysema. Now, if we look at the beginning of this word, M-E-D, now this in olden times was used to describe words that meant the middle, you know, like Mediterranean, the middle of the earth, M-E-D. So if we can just recognise the med bit, then that will remind us that it's sort of the one that's in the middle. Now, let's have another look to see what will happen if my lung didn't burst here, but it burst somewhere else, okay? So maybe up here at the top here, right near my neck, up here, right at the top of my lungs here. Now we can see as we held our breath and air expanded, it burst here, and then it would come round this part of the body. It would make the neck swollen, it would make it crispy skinned, um, and it would be a little bit like a big saggy fat balloon really. Now let's have a look to see what this one's called. It's called subcutaneous emphysema. Emphysema, by the way, it just means trapped air. So subcutaneous, if we have a look at this word, sub means underneath, like it would do in submarine. Cutaneous, that's to do with the skin. So literally what this is talking about is under the skin, subcutaneous. And we know that emphysema means trapped air, so trapped air underneath the skin. And you can you sort of imagine what it would feel like if it was all under, under here. Okay, now for another word. You can see from my drawing here that these bits here represent the rib cage because the lungs are inside the rib cage. Now look what would happen if there was gonna be a burst lung here. Yeah. Now what would happen here is then air would get trapped in between 
into this cavity between the lung and the rib cage. And what would happen then is as we continue to, or as I continue to surface, and that area here expanded, the air here would expand and it would cause the lung to collapse down here, like this. Okay. Now this is called a pneumothorax. Now, if we have a look at these words again, pneumo means air, as it would do in pneumatic tyre, okay, and thorax, that's like the chest area. So pneumothorax means air in the chest area. Now, what we can see here is the air's got into the chest area and expanded as I seem to come up to the surface, and then what it's done is collapsed the lung, which is what often happens when air gets into that cavity. So all we really need to remember now is words like med for middle, sub for underneath the skin, and pneumothorax, this will probably be a collapsed lung. The next one we're going to do is the worst case scenario now. We're going to talk about a gas embolism. We often get paddy questions um, asking us what is the most serious lung overexpansion injury and of course the answer is always going to be gas embolism. Now the gas embolism is when gas, and in this case it's probably going to be air if we've got a burst lung, is air gets into the bloodstream. But how can that happen? Well you know the transfer of gases, that ends, that's in the alveoli here. So we've got the bloodstream here and then we've got the alveoli coming in here. And this is where the exchange of gases is. This is where oxygen gets transferred into the blood and carbon dioxide comes back out of the blood. Now, if we had this worst case scenario and we get a, a rupture here, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get bubbles that go into the bloodstream. Of course, this is very similar to decompression sickness, where instead of air bubbles, nitrogen bubbles can, uh, can appear into the bloodstream. Now that lesson on Henry's law in the physics section explains this in more detail. But the end result is that if you ascend too fast, the pressure gradient of dissolved nitrogen is greater than the surrounding pressure around you. And just like the common fizzy drink analogy, bubbles can form leading to serious problems. But whatever the cause of those bubbles in the bloodstream, either air from the burst lung, like here, or nitrogen with decompression sickness, the symptoms can be the same. Anything from itchy skin, pain in joints, skin rash, all the way through to headaches, fatigue, numbness, and even death. Now, fortunately, we don't need to diagnose the course. The first aid is going to be the same for, for everything here, oxygen, rest and medical assistance. We don't even need to be medical experts to describe the condition either, because the blanket term for decompression illness, the, sorry, the blanket term is decompression illness or DCI, and this covers the two situations that we've been talking about. So DCI, I is for burst lung and also for decompression sickness. Now Paddy questions often, quite rightly, focus on the fact that you need to be fit to dive. So you're probably going to get questions like, what increases the risk of decompression sickness? And the correct answer will always relate to things like tiredness, dehydration, obesity, being old, cold, overexertion, anything that might interfere with the blood flow or interfere with a healthy body. So that's about it. There's usually quite a few questions on PADI exams regarding this subject. And in the next lesson, I've added quite a few questions with some very typical PADI type wording. And as usual, I've given an explanation with every single one of them, just in case you need a little bit more information. Anyway, good luck with those, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.